Good morning, church. Morning. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. It is good to have you with us in worship this day. Thank you for spending part of your Easter Sunday with us here at Peace. Uh, it is, like I said, it is good to have you, have you with us today. A couple of quick announcements uh, to share with you this morning. Uh, uh, I guess we don't have any more services today, so we'll skip that announcement. <laughs> Playing it in my head. <laughs> this is my third service today, all right? So it cut me a little slack. Uh, we have worship on Wednesday evening at 5.30 on Facebook Live. And then at 6 o'clock, we'll do Zoom communion. And 6.30 p.m. this coming Wednesday, out in our parking lot off of uh, Minnesota in 10th, we will be having a campfire service with hymns and uh scripture and a reflection and some goodies, I believe. It's to be a great night, so come join us as we welcome in warmer weather, longer daylight, and so on. And so please come uh, join us this Wednesday at 6.30 out in our parking lot. We'd love to have you. And then this coming Sunday, we'll be back to what we, has been our normal schedule, which is 8 a.m. Facebook Live service and uh, 9 o'clock uh, in-person service, which is also live streamed. Hello to the folks who are watching on live stream. Uh, please let us know you're here, and if um, if we're having some sound issues, uh, let us know that too, so we can make sure you get those corrected. All right, with that, let's take a moment. We'll prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen to new life, as he promised he would. Christ has removed the sting of death and replaced it with the grace of forgiveness. Yet there are times when we struggle to believe that this can be true. We do not always believe the words of the women who proclaim that the tomb was empty and that Christ is alive. We take a moment now to offer our confession for our doubt. Forgiving God. When we hear the word that the tomb is empty, we don't always feel the joy of the resurrection. Sometimes we feel fear and doubt where we should feel happiness and joy. Forgive our disbelief that the story is true. Forgive us when we doubt your love. Remind us that death does not have the final answer, and death no longer has power over us. We give you thanks for loving us as we are, and for creating us to be your light in the world. Siblings of the risen Christ, God who has raised Jesus from the dead offers us a new life in Christ. Child of God, your sins are forgiven. Death has no longer has any power over you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! And now for the first time in far too long, I'm able to say, please join us in our opening hymn.
Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our reading. first reading is from the book of Acts chapter 10, beginning with the 34th verse. In this reading, Peter crosses the immense religious and social boundary that separates Jews from Gentiles in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, so that God's forgiveness in Jesus' name would reach out to all people. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning with the first verse. In this reading, we learn that the core of the Christian faith and Paul's preaching is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As the crucified and risen Christ appeared to the earliest of his followers, so we experience the presence of the risen one in the preaching of this faith. Now I remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which in turn, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, you may be seated. Are you a good listener? Especially when you think you already know the story that's about to be told and you probably could tell it and probably tell it better. Maybe you don't even bother listening to those kinds of stories because you know how they're going to play out. And so why, why invest the energy? But then you hear, out, you hear a piece of the story that you have not heard before or you hear something that causes you to pause and wonder, is this the story I thought I know so well? So we're going to try an example this morning. All right, we just heard the resurrection story from the Gospel of Mark. And we think we all probably know the resurrection story, but I'm going to ask you this, what was missing from that story? There was a significant piece missing from that story. Do you know what it was? Here, I'll help you out. The men have fled out of fear, but the women remained faithful. Yep, we had that. We've got the women coming to the tomb with spices to anoint Jesus. Yes. It was early on the first day after the sun had risen. Yes. There was discussion about who is going to roll away this very large stone from the tomb. Yes. But they get there and the stone is gone. Yes. They enter into the tomb. They do not find Jesus, but instead they find a messenger who said, Jesus is not here for he is alive. Check. The women are scared of this message. And the messenger says, don't be scared. Because Jesus has done what he said. Go to Galilee instead. That's where he's going to be. Go and tell others that Jesus is alive. And then he points to the spot where Jesus was laying. As if to prove his point. Check. So then the women flee from the tomb with terror and amazement. And they don't tell anyone. Well, that's not how the story goes. That's not it at all. I mean, the women are supposed to flee and tell everyone, right? But that's the resurrection story according to Mark. All eight verses of it. We end with terror and amazement. And nobody telling anybody anything. So as I told you the story again, did you catch what was missing? Did you catch it? There was no Jesus. Jesus. There was no Jesus mentioned in those eight verses. Jesus did not appear to anybody. I mean, there was a guy telling them that Jesus is alive. There was a guy saying, go tell everybody Jesus is alive. Go to Galilee. That's where Jesus is going to meet you. But there was no Jesus. Jesus did not appear. Not to the women, not to the disciples, not to anyone. In Mark's gospel resurrection story. We don't get the women busting in on the men who are hiding in the upper room behind locked doors and telling them that Jesus is alive. We don't get the men telling the women that they're crazy, that that can't possibly be true. We don't get the men then running 
to the tomb because they don't believe the women, because who can believe women, right? We don't get any of that. We don't get Jesus appearing to them and saying it's going to be okay. No, we end with terror and amazement. That's not the story we've gathered to hear this morning. That's not the story that has come to comfort us year after year on Easter Sunday. Yet it's the story that we have. So what are we supposed to do with this story? That's not joyful. There isn't life-giving or familiar. What are we supposed to do with terror and amazement? We need Jesus to tell us he's alive. We need to see him. That's what Easter's about, right? Perhaps it's good that our expectations are upended this day. Perhaps it's good that the story isn't the familiar one we think we know so well, and rather it's one that we have to stop and listen to. That forces us to go, wait a minute, I didn't know that. Wait a minute. Perhaps if we take a moment to listen, we might discover more in this story than we ever might have imagined. Maybe it's the gospel resurrection story that we needed this year. After all, we've been through a year that was unlike anything anyone could have possibly imagined. Perhaps this is the resurrection story for 2021. One that is filled with questions and doubts and fears, bewilderment, frustration, anxiety, abrupt endings, changing on the fly. Maybe this is exactly what we need to hear because it's what we've become accustomed to doing. Have you ever noticed that God gives you exactly what you need when you need it? And have you also noticed that Many times it's not what you imagined it was going to look like when God gives it to you. It's not what you think you need or want, but yet there is God showing up anyway, giving you exactly what you need when you need it. From our other resurrection stories, we know that the women did go and tell their story. We know that others didn't listen to them until Jesus finally appeared and said they were right. We know that this Jesus was not in the tomb, but is somehow alive. And that is confusing and exciting and terrifying all at the same time. We know that Jesus ultimately appears to them, shows him his hands and his side, and he says, it is I, do not be afraid. And they're still afraid. They still hide behind locked doors because it can't possibly be true. We know all of this. So what might this version of the resurrection story be telling us? What might the gospel writer of Mark be trying to get through to us in 2021? In the midst of our fear and confusion, in the midst of our sadness and pain, in the midst of doubt and brokenness, Christ is already there. Christ has conquered all of it on our behalf. Forgiveness reigns supreme. What would happen if we stopped to listen? Rather than assuming we know the story. Rather than knowing that we could tell the story better than the person who's telling it. What if we learned to listen? What if instead of focusing on terror and amazement, we focused on the fact that Jesus is alive and this messenger is telling us to go to Galilee. That's where you'll find him. What if instead of focusing on an abrupt ending, we see that this is an opportunity for us to tell the story the way that makes sense for us? What if the gospel writer trusts us enough to tell the story the way that makes sense for us? For us to understand that Jesus is where Jesus has always been. Feeding the hungry, healing the sick, welcoming in the outcast, you know, loving one another as we've been instructed. Love your neighbor. What if we don't need to be reminded of that because Jesus has been telling us this entire time? If you want to see me, find the people who are helping others. That's where I'm always going to be. Beloved, you have seen and experienced the risen Christ in your life. And that is why we gather on this Easter Sunday. Because you have experienced Jesus in your life. 
And you want to experience that again. You want to be reminded of the promise is true. It serves as a reminder that God will keep God's promises. We encounter Christ wherever we are and wherever we are bold enough to believe that Christ can also be. Go and tell the good news. Even if people won't believe you, go and tell the good news anyway. Because they will believe. Sometimes we need to hear the story multiple times before it finally settles in. And sometimes we want to hear the story because it gives us hope. And it reminds us that we are forgiven. So go. Go and tell the good news. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Let's pray. God, thank you for empty tombs. Thank you for promises that are kept. Thank you for the reminder that we can find Jesus wherever we find others who are helping and caring. Help us to be the ones who help and care for others. In the name of the risen Christ, amen. to stand as you are able as we get ready for our prayers. For the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. 
fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurre resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O oh God. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming, your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And as we, and as we get ready for communion, uh, I want to take this moment if you have not, uh, if you did not happen to grab a communion uh, cup as you came in this morning, uh, and you would like one so that you can participate with us in communion, uh, Lucinda is willing to, to bring you a cup, so all you have to do is kind of make a little wave and she'll gladly bring one to you. And um, if you're watching at home and are planning on participating with us in communion, now would be a great time to make sure that you have your elements ready. Uh, so that we can, so you can participate with us. I also want to say thank you for continuing to support the ministry that happens here at Peace. We simply could not do this without you, and the support has been amazing. And so if you ask me the best way to support what happens here at Peace, I'm always going to tell you, please continue to pray for us, because prayer makes a difference. So please pray for us. If you're able to help us financially, that's also welcome. And there's a variety of ways to do that. We have offering plates that you can drop your offering in. You can send your off offering in. You can um, uh, drop it by the office when the office is open. You can also go to our website, peaceoshkosh.com. Click on the Donate Here button. And there's a couple of quick steps. You can do it that way. So if you're able to help us financially, fantastic. But most of all, please continue to pray for us. So with that, let's get ready for communion. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us and serve us to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance 
of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey. The gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome at this table. And so if you're here with us and you've got one of these communion cups, I invite you to pull back that top layer. And trust me that sometimes it's difficult to pull back even for those who do it regularly. And once you have the wafer, I say it to you, the body of Christ is given for you. And in the same manner I say, blood of Christ is shed for you. Thanks be to God. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we see the blessing. You are what God has created you to be. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Chosen as holy and beloved. Freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Before we sing our sending hymn, once again, thank you for being here this day. It is great to have you with us in worship it has been far too long to see you. Soon we will be able to gather in the narthex and share stories. Uh, not quite yet, but we're getting there. And, but this is a great first step to be able to see you. And so thank you for being here. Thank you to our tech booth for the work that you've done. Thanks to Summer for providing in-person music. That's been fantastic. Thanks to our ushers, our readers, takes so many hands to make this happen. Most of all, I'm thankful for you. So with that, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing our sending hymn.